Amen, amen. And at this time, we're going to call for our praise team to come. Our praise team to come. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you excited about this day? Hallelujah. God has been so good to us. Hallelujah. We don't deserve this. Hallelujah. But he took upon all of our oh, sins. Hallelujah. For us to have this day right here. Hallelujah. So we thank and praise him. Hallelujah. On this morning. Hallelujah. For all that he has uh, done for us. I don't all that he has done for us. Say praise the Lord as our praise team comes. So I just think it's gross. Like, it's a time limit. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Scripture says, be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Why? Because the Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. We just want to bless the Lord on this morning. We want to thank God for the awesome price that he pay, paid on today. This is a day like no other day. This is the day that our God got up with all power in his hands. And if he got up with all power in his hands, surely we can get up and thank him for what he did. Because he did for us what no one else could do. He did for us what we could not do. The Bible says that people would dare to die for you, but God came down from heaven. It wasn't some other person. It wasn't something but the very God that said, let there be and there was, came down and died for us. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. The Bible says that angels bow down before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. You don't understand how mighty God is. The mere fact that you woke up this morning declares his might. The mere fact that you got clothed in your right mind, came to the church, tuned in to our service. That's power from on high. Everybody didn't get up this morning. That's power on high. Everybody didn't come into a service like this today. That's power up on high. Somebody didn't tune in. Somebody couldn't get out the bed. Someone didn't see when they saw last night. Somebody couldn't walk even though they walked yesterday. That's power in our God. Amen. Come on, we just want to bless his name. Come on, we want to set the atmosphere of praise so that we can bless our God and hear Hallelujah. from him on today. Come on, if you don't mind, I want you just to clap your hands. Come on, celebrate this day with us. Come on, take off the cares of yesterday. Take off the cares of the things that you have going on. Forget about that dinner that you wait to get to. That Easter egg hunt and all of that. And let's just praise God in this moment. Is that all right? Come on, it's a real easy song, and I want you to sing it with us. The song says this. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praise. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name on high. And I love to sing your praise.
praise. Come on, Lord, I lift your name on high. Come on, come on. You can't, you can't, you can't from heaven to show what's the way from the earth to the cross. My text, you can't. It's gonna be a glorious day. 
you and we thank you for coming out this morning to help us lift up the name of Jesus on this glorious day amen amen to our online audience thank you for tuning in amen amen well, amen 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 welcome Pastor. welcome welcome you all we're so happy to have you our online audience and all of you that are here thank you all so much amen to be here on resurrection Sunday tell somebody I made it on resurrection Sunday Say, of all the Sundays I could have made, I picked the right one this time. Tell somebody, I picked the right one. It's a getting up Sunday morning. Amen. We're grateful on behalf of Lady Eliaka and myself and all of our pastors and all of our members here at the Lighthouse. We just want to say welcome. We want you to feel welcome. You're welcome to praise the Lord. You're welcome to clap your hands. You're welcome to run around, shout, and dance. Look at somebody say, I got a reason to praise the Lord. I got a reason. I got a reason to praise the Lord. I got a reason to praise him. Amen. So we want you to feel free. Feel free to worship the Lord on this morning, this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Listen, I'm just excited in my sanctified spirit that God has allowed us to come together one more time to worship him. Tell somebody, it's always Resurrection Sunday. Say, whenever I show up at church, it's Resurrection Sunday. Because the week before it didn't win. It tried to put me in the grave, but it didn't win. Tell somebody, I woke up this morning with victory. My name is Victory. I got resurrection power. Amen, amen. I feel good on this morning because it's a glorious day. Amen, amen. A glorious day. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm not going to start nothing. I'm going to do these announcements and get out of your way. Amen, amen. Because I feel a praise down in my sanctified soul on this morning because he's been good to me. He's been real, real good to me because our God is a good God. Our God is a good God. He got up. Hallelujah. He got up. Hallelujah. With all power. All power. Not some power, but he got up with all power. And that's something to celebrate. That's something to celebrate. He got up for me and you. He got up for me. He didn't just get up for me. So you owe him a praise because he got up for you. Hallelujah. With all power. We have Christian education every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Christian education. And I want to uh, thank you.
ain't got babies. I don't know if y'all watched it this morning, but I got really excited. Our little Easter program, they did an amazing job. Amen, amen. So that's all, that's part of the Sun Christian education. That's our young people department. Amen, amen. They are to be celebrated. They worked hard, and it, it was amazing. If you didn't watch it, get a chance to go back and watch a replay of it. It was really beautiful. Amen. We have Sunday morning worship service every Sunday morning that starts promptly at 10.30 a.m. Meet us here. Be us here. Amen. We will continue to have Tuesday night Bible studies here at the Lighthouse of Hope Church, 7 p.m. And while we're in, in the sanctuary, in Bible study, our youth are tapping in. They are tapping in. So adults, if you have, amen, amen, they're tapping in. Amen, amen. So if you have um, children and you want to come out, you can come in here and get the word um, at our Bible study, and then you can send your uh, the youth to tapping in. Our women's ministry, amen, Glow Women's Ministry, with, amen. We will have our first event of the year. It is going to be a pajama jam. Friday, April the 5th from 7 p.m. until see Pastor Stacy Wallace if you are planning to attend so we can plan accordingly. If you are planning to attend, please see Pastor Stacy Wallace. Amen. Amen. Our homegoing services for Mother Diane Ivy, the mother of our very own Sheena Suggs. Um, her wake will be Friday, April the 5th from 6 p.m. Uh, to 9 p.m. Um, a wake and a musical. They will have a wake and a musical April the 5th at BFAC. That's Bible Fellowship Apostolic Church in, I believe it's in Cahokia, Illinois. And then the funeral will be also Saturday, April the 6th at 10 a.m. Is that at BFAC as well? Yes, uh, the, the wake and the musical will be at One Way Church. Okay. One Way Church in East St. Louis. Okay. That's her family's home church. And Amen. that will start at 6 p.m. Okay, so the musical will not be at BFAC. It will be at One Way, the, her family church, the McDonald's. We will post this information on board and on band as well as it will be on all social media platforms. Amen. And we want to go out and we want to support our very own in the passing of her beautiful mother, Evangelist Diane Ivy. Amen. All visitors, please fill out your visitor's cards and turn them in to the ushers. All visitors, please. Please fill out your visitor's card and turn them into the ushers because we want to keep in touch with you. Amen. Um, special gifts for each family visiting for the first time. Gifts will be distributed in the lobby after service. We have something we want to give to you for um, fellowshipping with us today. First time visitors, please um, see someone that will be in the lobby right after service today for your, free, your first time gift. Easter baskets for the children will be in the fellowship hall immediately after morning worship. The fellowship hall, the children, please go to the fellowship hall to receive your Easter basket on this morning. And we're asking at the end of service, at the end of service, uh, parents, escort your children this way, and they will go into our rear, to the fellowship hall. They will receive their baskets, and then they will come in. They will come in out on this side. So we want them to exit out this way to go to our fellowship hall to receive their baskets. Amen. 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 We have a miracle walk coming up in the house on this morning. Amen. Amen. He is truly a miracle of what God can do. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank him for him, all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our very own Willie Jones Jr., the son of our very own Pastor Jones, and Burley Jones. Amen. Amen. It is so good to see you. So good to see you, Mookie. Amen. I thank God for the miracle. I thank God for a miracle because he shouldn't be here, but he is. And our brothers and our brother. And, and there we go. My, my, my brother, my sweet brother, my sweet brother, Dontrell. My sweet brother, Dontrell, and my you sister, amen, and, and my nieces and nephews, amen, amen. Good to see you, Dontrell. Good to see you. Good to see you, Stephanie. Amen, amen. God is good. God is good. It's good to see your family and friends in the house of the Lord. Amen, amen. I believe that that will conclude our announcements for this morning. And if you could all please stand as we read our confession of faith.
Amen. And it reads, I am now releasing my faith by confessing this to be the greatest day of my life. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I am a recreated being. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. I am created into his glorious image and his likeness. I am his workmanship and am complete in Christ. I am full of his spirit and divine power. I am God's property. I have been bought with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, I am free from the curse of the law, sin, sickness, poverty, fear, doubt, worry, confusion, and all that Satan represents shall not have dominion over me. I am prospering in my spirit, soul, body, and finances, for I am a liberated person. Jesus said, I will know the truth, and the truth will make me free. I am standing fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made me free. I am expecting God to meet all of my needs and to do super abundantly above all I dare to ask, hope, dream, or desire in every area of my life. I speak directly to every mountain of satanic adversity in my life and command them to go in the name of Jesus. They cannot stay, they must go in Jesus' name. Through the abundance of God's grace, I have received a gift of righteousness, for I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and am now reigning in this life by Christ Jesus. Today, I will worship him with all my heart, soul, and strength. I lift up my voice and my hands in praise and adoration to his glorious name, for he is worthy of praise, and he has made me worthy to praise his name. Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, y'all. Let's worship God just for a few moments.
church. Come on, all over the sanctuary. If you know he's not dead, stand to your feet. If you know Christ is alive. Go with me very quickly, giving honor to God who's the head of my life. Amen. Certainly, I would be like a ship without a sail. Amen. To God, to all of our pastors, hey, Pastor Jones, Pastor Reed, Pastor Thompson, Pastor Joe Thompson, Pastor Elex Wallace and Duggar, Pastor Sharon. To our mother's board. Amen. Let's give our mother's board a hand, everybody. To our streaming audience, to the veterans, to all of our visitors to God's people everywhere, and to my lovely wife, Lady Eliaka. Let's give God praise for her. Amen. Amen. Have you looked at your neighbor and said, I'm so glad you're here today? Just look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm so glad you're here. Now, now say, say, I pray you like me. Say, I pray you like me. Because I'm going to touch you a lot today. I'm going to push on you. I'm going to slap high five with you. So, so, so if, if, you don't, if, if, if you don't like all of that, say, let's just get a little more acquainted. Amen. Amen. We're certainly praying for all those that are sick and shut in to our own brother, Joe Woods, who has come out of the woods. Come on, church. Y'all got to do better than that. He's come out of the woods. He's come out of the woods. He's got, he's got some ways to go. But the worst of it, look at somebody, I feel a shout in my spirit. The worst of it is over. He had a traumatic event. One for which it was touch and go. One for which his life was almost in jeopardy. Uh, one for which the doctors didn't give us very many options to how he was going to recover. But the saints started praying. Tell somebody, don't shortchange yourself. Every time the line is called for prayer, you should run up here. Because you never know when you're going to need prayer yourself. And there might come a time when you can't pray for yourself. Tell somebody, you need a church family. You need a church family. That's what church is for. When you're in trouble, you can go to a community. go to a community that will pray for you. And Brother Joe, amen. He's uh, progressing this way and keep the prayer wheel turning. Keep the prayer. Keep Brother Joe in your prayers. His lovely wife Ashley Woods, his mother, Mother Beatrice Brown, and all of his children and sisters. Amen. All those that love him, his nieces and nephews. All those that love them, keep them all in your prayer. And we believe God's going to do complete the miracle. I was talking to Deacon Brown, and he said, Pastor, God already did the miracle. He already did the miracle. And so we're waiting for the manifestation of the miracle to come forth. And I just believe God. I just believe God that Brother Joe is going to walk again. He's going to have dexterity of his limbs. Amen. He's going to have cognition. He's going to remember. I declare and decree right now. I speak it right now. That everything that the devil tried to take from him, God's going to give it back to him. Going to give it back. Will y'all just grab somebody on the hand and say, I touch and agree. I touch 
I touch and agree for our dear brother Joe. All the bereaving family, Sister Annie to the Dinsmore, Turner, the Ivy and Scruggs families. Um, as my wife mentioned earlier, for all of our first time visitors, yeah, yeah, for all of our first time visitors, there will be a table to the right as you're leaving the sanctuary. Don't leave without a gift because we, uh, to the left, oh, you mean to the left, uh, this way. Yeah, this way. Without your gift, a lot of effort. We wanted to make this day special for you, for all our first time families, not all first time visitors. For every household that's represented, amen. We have a special gift for you, amen. Mark chapter number 16. Mark chapter number 16. Mark chapter number 16. And we're going to uh, read verses. 1 through 14, I believe. Mark chapter number four, 16, starting at verse number 1. Preacher, can you make that a little bit bigger? Oh, my. Yeah, okay. okay uh, look, look at somebody say, I got my Bible. I got my Bible. Look at somebody. Make sure they got a Bible. Say, 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 you got it on your phone. You, you need to put it on your phone. Look at, look at your neighbor. Just look at him. Get, get your Bible. Yeah, put it, pull it out. Pull it out. Where you, where you, ask your neighbor, do you go to McDonald's without any form of payment? Come on. You, you think your good looks going to get you that double quarter pounder? Come on, talk to me. How many of y'all say your good looks? Ain't a hand went up. Yeah. You go to Macy's. You got some form of payment. You got a social security number, a driver's license, something, because they want to get paid. You go into those places, and you're expected to have some type of payment. So when you come into church, you have something to show God that I'm serious, and that is your Bible. Take your Bible in your hand and say, this Bible that I have, it is God in written form say it again say this bible that i have is god in written form say i got god with me say it again i got god with me all right uh, mark chapter number 16 starting at verse number 1 through 14 we're going to do a lot of reading uh today i figure since it's easter sunday and some of y'all ain't read the Bible all year. We're going to make up for it today. We're going to make up for it today. All right. M Mark chapter number 16, verse number 1. And let's read with one voice the word of God. Here beginneth the reading of, of the word of God. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold, the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter. Wait a minute. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter. That he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. And he said unto you, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre. For they trembled and were amazed 
Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they said, and, and, when, and they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue. Neither believed they them. Afterwards, he appeared unto the eleven. And as they sat at meat, he abraded them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he is risen. It is prim it's primarily from um, verse number six where you find these words, yet ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. For the few moments I have with you, I just want to leave this thought with you. Will you help me preach this? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, come on, neighbor. Say, neighbor, get up. Tell somebody, he got up. Look at your neighbor again and say, he got up. Now, if you believe it, put both hands together and give God some praise. Dear Lord, bless us through your word. Help us to say what only you would have us to say. Help there be demonstration of power today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And every heart said, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. On this Resurrection Sunday, um, we, we have prepared some things for you. Um, Resurrection Sunday, uh, the church calls it Resurrection Sunday. The world calls it Easter Sunday. And in contextual fashion, um, it means two different things. Uh, when you think of Easter, you think of uh, the clad berry. Come on. Uh, you think of the the Easter rabbit. Uh, you think of uh, the Reese's with the peanut butter cup. You, do I have any help in here? Uh, do you you think of jelly beans? Come on, y'all, talk to me. Uh, I think of Easter suits, and uh, I saw I saw an emoji. It had two hot cones and some blue grease on the side. Anybody remember that? Yeah, Saturday night. Yeah, we got to we got to comb no kinka bugs out. Y'all y'all don't I'm going way old school, but a Sunday S Saturday night before Easter was a high time in my family. My my grandmother would be cooking and uh she would be pressing hair. Y'all y'all do y'all still press hair? Oh lord, lord, lord. Y'all y'all missed out. Y'all missed out on getting your neck burnt at the back end. Y'all Y'all missed out on all of that and the ear getting nicked by a little hot comb. Come on, somebody. Uh, look at some women. They said, we don't miss that at all. You see the little teeth mark on the back of your neck. Come on, talk to me. Uh, I remember those days. I remember uh, the Easter egg hunt. Do y'all still do, do you still do Easter egg hunt where you would boil the eggs and uh, dye them and paint them and, and hide them all over the place and and it was just a fun time. And, and, and I, I long for those days because uh, although those things were commercialized, uh, uh, we had a sense of knowing that on Easter Sunday, which we call Resurrection Sunday, was a getting up Sunday. Uh, it was the day that we declared we had victory. Out of all the days of the holidays, all the holidays that we could celebrate, uh, we celebrate the fact that our Lord and Savior rose from the dead. Now, the question is, why did he have to rise? Why did he have to rise? And in order to understand why he had to rise, you will need to go all the way back to Genesis. 
uh, there in the Garden of Eden, there was some things that transpired after God had made the heavens and the earth, after he had formed the waters, after he had made the fishes and the birds, uh, after he had put vegetation on the earth and herb yielding seeds, and after he had made everything that creepeth upon the earth, every four-legged, two-legged uh, creature that creeped upon the earth, the spider, the beetle, the fly, the mites, after he had created all of that, uh, on day number six, he said, let us make man. Uh, it was his greatest crowning achievement. Uh, nothing compared to mankind like uh, what he did for man. Now, if you study astrology or uh, astrophysics, you will see that God is magnificent in his power. You will see that there are suns out there that are greater than the sun over us. You will see that there are faraway galaxies and they're beautiful. There are spiraling instruments. You will see that Jupiter is a gaseous uh, uh, planet. If you were to land on Jupiter, you would just keep falling because there is no hard surface to land on. There's no hard surface on Neptune. Uh, there is no hard surface on Uranus. Uh, so God in his splendor makes all of these things. But when it comes to his crowning achievement, uh, he crowns man. The, the angel says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visited him. In the garden, God created a man named Adam. And he filled him with intellectual power. Through his breath, he made man a living soul. Man with one breath of God's nostril became aware of his environment, became aware of his surroundings, knew the difference between the animals, knew the conversation and the relationship that he had with God. Uh, this man through one hoof of God's nostril was filled with wisdom, knowledge, understanding. This man, Adam, named all the creatures. God looked at him and saw uh, that he was alone. He said, it's not good for man to be alone. And so for the first time and the only time in human history, a man gives birth to a woman. The Bible says that God lays him down to sleep, opens up his side, takes out a rib, and from the same dirt that Adam was built from, made from, with Adam's rib attached as the instrument, God forms this beautiful thing that we call a woman. Now, when you think about man and you think about woman, there ain't nothing better looking. Oh, Lord than a woman. Y'all, come on, talk to me. Uh, you just look at her. Look at the splendor of a woman. Won't you? Do I have some women in here that just don't mind being women? Just, you know, you got to shake what your mama gave you. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know you're a woman. You know you're a bad creation. Uh, you, know, you know the crowning moment. I thought it was Adam. But when Adam saw Eve, he said, wow, man, that's for me. And he called her woman. The Bible told him, the Bible tells us that God told Adam uh, to take care of the garden. And Adam's job was to tell Eve how to take care of the garden. You know the story. Uh, the, the, the serpent, the snake, uh, crawled up this tree that God told him was forbidden to eat the fruit of. He didn't tell him it was forbidden to touch. He didn't tell him it was forbidden to prune. He said, just don't eat the fruit of it. You could take care of it, but don't eat it. Uh, the serpent crawls up and he talks to uh, Eve and says, you know, God, uh, he trying to hold something back from you. Uh, he knows that in the day that you eat of this fruit, uh, you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And Eve fell for Satan's trick. That's snake, old Slewfoot. She fell for his trick and she ate of that fruit, the Bible says, and gave to her husband. Now, the beauty about it, when Eve ate of that fruit, nothing happened. 
God. Uh, Eve ate of that fruit and nothing happened. She didn't get endowed with wisdom. She didn't know right from wrong. But the Bible says that when she gave it to her husband, uh, and how many of y'all husbands uh, resist your wife's cooking? Come on, talk to me. Uh, you know, she ain't going to cook nothing you don't like. Y'all, come on, y'all. Uh, it's Easter Sunday. It's all right. Y'all going to still be married when it's over. Uh, so she gives to him, and he eats this fruit that he knows is forbidden. The Bible says that their eyes were opened. Uh, they understood now good and evil. As uh, before that time, they didn't know what evil was. Uh, they didn't even know what good was because they were taught of God. But when Adam ate of that fruit, both their eyes were open, and that caused sin. And the greatest enemies of mankind is not disease. The greatest enemy of mankind is not nuclear war. The greatest enemy of mankind is death, hell, and the grave. Can you say that with me? The greatest enemy of mankind is death, hell, and the grave. The Bible says that when Adam ate it, God came looking for him in the cool of the day as he did aforetime. He couldn't find him. He said, Adam, Adam, where are you? Adam hid himself. Now look how he hides himself. He hides himself in the forest. He hides himself amongst the trees and he puts on fig leaves. Anybody ever felt a fig leaf? Do I have anybody in here? If you know anything about fig leaves, they are porcy. Mm -hmm. They got little protective enzymes on the end of them. It's very microscopic, but if you put a fig against your skin, it will itch you. And the Bible says that Adam and Eve took figs and covered themselves because they knew that they were naked. And not only did they know that they were naked, now they're itching. Can you imagine trying to hide from God and you're scratching everywhere? And God comes and looks for Adam and Eve. And he said, where are you, Adam? He said, we hid ourselves because we were naked. He said, who told you you were naked. I never did disclose to you that you were naked. He said, who told you? He said, did you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that I forbid you? He said, yes. He said, this woman you gave me, the woman said, the serpent beguiled me. And God started cursing. He cursed the snake. He said, on your belly you shall eat and lick dust all the days of your life. He says, but here it is, devil. Here it is, Satan. He said, you going to bruise the seed. You going to bruise the heel of the seed of the woman. But the seed of the woman is going to bruise your head. He says to the serpent, because you beguiled the woman, I'm going to set enmity between your seed and her seed. He says, I'm going to set it up so that you two will never get along. I'm going to set it up so you will be arch enemies forever. And so when you bite his heel, you going to bruise him. But when he steps on your head, he's going to crush you. Then he tells the woman, he says, I had planned for you to have easy childbirth. I just planned for the man to just uh, impregnate you and you'd live happy. Your nose wouldn't flare out. Come on, y'all not going to talk to me. You wouldn't wobble when you walk. Uh, y'all still not going to. Y'all stay right there. I find you. You, uh, you wouldn't have attitude. You wouldn't have cravings for pickles and peanut butter. Uh, you wouldn't have cravings for ice cream at 3 a.m. in the morning. You wouldn't have to worry about gaining weight while you're carrying a baby. But because you let this devil, this Satan, this trickster uh, trick you into disobeying me, uh, you shall have childbirth in pain. Uh, and every woman in here, epidural or not, uh, oh, that bad boy hurts. At some point, you're going to hurt 
wife carrying a baby. Uh, and then he gives the worst of his punishment to the man. Uh, he says, from now on out, you're going to have to work for your meat. Uh, he said, from the brow, from the sweat of your brow. Uh, he said, everything that would just come up when you would speak to it. If you wanted apples, uh, if you wanted cucumbers, uh, if you wanted squash and tomatoes, if you wanted oranges and watermelon, all you had to do is speak to it mm, and it would grow. But since you let this woman uh, cause you to disobey me, uh, he said, you're going to have to wet, you're going to have to work for it. Uh, and he says, one more thing, man. Uh, he said, from dust you were made, uh, and from dust you shall return. Uh, he said, all your days are going to be limited. Mm, he said, death is going to come upon you, uh, and I'm going to return you back to the dust. Uh, and so because of Adam's sin, mm, because of Adam's disobedience, uh, he caused a rift between mankind and God. Uh, it doesn't matter if you live all your life doing right. The fact of the matter is if you come through the matrix of a woman, uh, you are born in sin. Uh, it doesn't matter. All of us were born in sin. Watch this. And shaping in crookedness. Uh, you standing, you sitting right next to a crook. I wouldn't leave my purse next to him. I, I wouldn't leave my wallet next to him because all of us got some crookedness in us. All of us are bent towards something. The Bible says that God then takes an animal. He cuts and kills the animal and the animal's blood is shed. He takes the blood of that animal and offers it to himself. He takes the skin of that animal and put it on Adam and Eve and kick them out of the garden. And for 960 years, Adam lived without any more communication with God. And his 960th year, almost a thousand years he lived, but he died. He died never having his relationship restored back to God. And God always wanted to have a relationship with man. But because God is so holy and we are so sinful, there was always a separation between us and God. And God says, how can I get back to man? I need to get back to man. I didn't make man to be separated from him. I made man to be in communion and relationship with him. So how can I get back to man? He said, I know I'll use Cain and Abel. Cain then kills his brother. He said, I can't use Cain because he's a murderer. And Abel is dead. He said, I know I'll use Seth. But Seth is a baby boy. He said, I can't use Seth. He said, I know I'll use Noah. I have Noah build an ark. I'll flood the earth. But Noah was a drunkard. He said, I know I'll use Abraham. He said, I'll give Abraham a promise. But Abraham is a liar. Because every time Abraham shows up in a different country, he tells everybody that's his wife. Sarai is not his wife, but his sister. He said, I can't use Abraham. He said, well, I'll use Isaac. Isaac is another mama's boy. Can't use him. I'll give Isaac two sons, Esau and Jacob. He said, I'll use Esau. Esau is a wild man. He won't do nothing I tell him to do. And Jacob is a trickster. He said, I'll use Jacob. And Jacob is a surplanter, a trickster. Every time you turn around, he's trying to get over it. Can you see the pattern? Ever since Adam made the mistake of eating that forbidden fruit, every man after him has failed trying to restore us back. He said, I'll use Jacob. He said, I'll even change his name to Israel. He said, I'll use Israel. But if you read Genesis chapter number 45, 49, they don't call him Israel. They call him Jacob. Why? Because there's still some Jacob in all of us. No matter how long we've been converted, no matter how long we've been saved, there's still some 
old me trying to rise up. Said, I can't use Jacob. He said, well, I try to use the priests. I try to use the judges. He said, I try to use Joshua. I can't use Joshua. I can't use after Jacob. Then comes Moses. He said, I'll use Moses. Mm -hmm. But Moses killed a man. Uh, Moses was too scared to talk at times. Uh, he said, I can't use Moses. Maybe I'll use Joshua. Uh, Joshua doesn't have a secession plan. Uh, and so there is no leader. So judges raise up. Uh, he said, well, I'll use Samson, the strongest man. Uh, but Samson loved too many fine women. Uh, and every time a fine woman walked across his path, uh, he said, I got to have her. Uh, I can't use Samson. He said, well, I'll try to use the priest. He said, well, let me give you Samuel. Samuel said, listen, Eli, Eli, Eli is the prophet that's there. He said, Eli, God sent me word to say that you're letting your boys do everything in the house. Every time they come, Eli, you're not disciplining your boys. Y'all follow me? Every time God tries to use a man, every man fails. From Adam even now to the priest, Eli. He says, Eli, you won't get your boys. And Eli, I'm warning you, if you don't get your boys from messing with the women and taking the offering, I'm going to kill you and your sons. Well, then he kills his youngest son. Eli still wouldn't correct. Then he kills his oldest son. Eli still couldn't correct. So God then takes the ark out of the place that God had originated it. And the Bible says because Eli was a heavy man, he fell back backwards and broke his neck. Here comes Samuel. And Samuel operates now just not just as a prophet, but he operates in a new position. He operates as the prophet priest. Not only does he make sacrifices for God, but he also predicts what's going to happen. The Bible says that the people under Samuel say we want a king. We want a king. I'm rushing to my point. Say, we want a king. We want a king. We want a king. We want a king. We want to be like all the other nations. You got to be careful that you don't try to be like everybody else. Uh, if everybody jumping off the bridge, you going to jump off? Come on. You got to be careful that you don't let your children be like everybody else. You got to be careful that you prevent certain stuff from coming in your house. I wish I had a few parents in here that would say, this is the house of God. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I dare I had two or three mothers or fathers that would look at your children and say, we're going to serve the Lord. I know I ain't got it right right now. I'm not doing it but right now on this Easter Sunday, we're going to serve the Lord. The Bible says, he says, now Samuel I want you to appoint a king. He said, give them a king. They give him the first king. His name is Saul. Saul is about seven feet tall. He's good looking. He looks kingly. He looks stately. He looks like somebody that will represent them going into battle. But Saul gets lifted up in pride. And God takes the kingdom from him and gives it to David. Y'all know David, uh, the one that's after God's own heart. Uh, the one that was the song man. Uh, he wrote songs unto God. Uh, Y'all know his hit. Y'all know his hit song. Uh, the hit song that uh, David wrote. Uh, Psalm 23. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, they was playing that all over Jerusalem radio. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, I shall not want. Uh, notice now David. Uh, he becomes the second in secession of the kingdom. And this is the point I want to drive home. It was this David that God says Shiloh should come from. It was this David that God said that I'm going to have the Messiah come from the lineage of David. Now David loved women too. And he was a fighter. And then whenever David got in trouble, he would repent. And the problem with the church today is that you get in trouble and you stay in trouble. You waddle in your mess.
this. Well, I made a mistake. I might as well stay in it. But you ought to learn from David that when he failed God, he was quick to say, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And if you just keep going down the lineage, all the men that were selected to be great leaders, all of them fail. From Adam to Malachi, they all fail. But here comes Jesus, wrapped up in a little girl's womb. Here comes Jesus, the Son of God, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning. Here comes Jesus, Mary's baby. Y'all know him. Oh, Y'all know him. He was born in Nazareth, born in Bethlehem, reared in Nazareth, walked around the streets of Capernaum. He walked around the streets of Galilee. Y'all know this Jesus. You know this baby boy Jesus went about in the synagogues when he was 12 years old. And here he is questioning all the dignitaries and all the folks who knew the law. The Bible says when he was 12, he went into the synagogue asking questions of the lawyer and answering their question. Then there was an 18-year silence. By the time he turns 30, he starts his ministry. Look at this man, Jesus. Now, he's not no baby now. He's not a boy now. But he's a man. And he says, I must be about my father's business. And there he is, heading to the Jordan River. There he is, heading to the Jordan. And John the Baptist sees him coming afar off. And John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. See, y'all don't understand what sin does, but sin separates you from God. Sin makes you an enemy of God. Sin keeps God away from you. You say, but God hears my prayers, and certainly he does, but that's the mercy of God working on your behalf. That's the plan of God. But hear me, brothers and sisters. If you die in your sins, you are not going to heaven. You are going to a devil's hell. Let me say this again. Because some of y'all think y'all can do whatever you want to do. And on your deathbed, say, Lord, forgive me, baby. It don't work like that. You can't spend your whole life living in sin, smoking weed, getting drunk, having all kind of illicit sex, gambling and cheating, stealing and gang banging, selling dope. Baby, if you die like that, this is what the Bible says. However a tree falls, that's how it's going to rise. In other words, how you die is how you going to get up. If you died a drug dealer, God says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Touch somebody, say, we got to get out of sin. Sin, 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 a sin, sin. We got to get out of sin. And this is why Jesus, why John the Baptist saw him. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which cometh to take away the sin of the world. He tells him he didn't come here to set up a political story. He didn't come here to be the ruler over all the nation, not yet. He came to die for our sins. He came to be the blood sacrifice the lamb of God here it is now Jesus he is perpendicular to Abraham and his son Isaac he's perpendicular here it is Abraham God tells Abraham I'm gonna give you a son not the one by the slave woman but one by your 
life. He says, I'm going to let you raise that boy up. He said, I'm going to let you raise him up and I'm going to let you fall in love with him, Abraham. I'm going to let him be the pride of your joy. I'm going to let him be everything you ever wanted. I'm going I'm to let you teach him how to play catch. I'm going to let you teach him how to ride a bike. I'm going to let you teach him how to tie a tie. I'm going to let you teach him how to tie his shoe. I'm going to let you teach him how to catch a football and swing the bat. I'm going to let you teach him how to ride camels. I'm going to let you put everything you want to put in him to make him just like you. I'm going to let you teach him how to be a great leader and how to be Lord over all that I'm going to leave you. And all of a sudden, God says to Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your son Isaac because I see you love him too much. I see you made all these assertions and all these things that you want to have in them. So I need you to sacrifice your son. Now when God, if God ever told one of y'all that, y'all would say, God, you have lost your mind. But Abraham said, God, you've been too good to me. And whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Watch this. Abraham and Isaac and his servants, they load up the horses, the donkeys, and then they put wood on the donkey. They take fire, and Abraham takes a knife, and they are three days journey from Mount Moriah, and they go out walking. About two days in, Abraham tells his servant, y'all stay here with the mules, and me and the boy are going up to worship and we're going to come back down. All alone Abraham knows I got to kill this boy. And so now Abraham and Isaac they're climbing up Mount Moriah. They're climbing it up and they get to the point of the sacrifice and the Bible says that Abraham takes wood and lays it on Isaac. And as Isaac is going to the part of the sacrifice. Isaac says, Dad, I see the fire and I got the wood, but where is the sacrifice? And Abraham says, God will provide himself a lamb. Some of that went over your head, but let me see if I can slow it down for you. Isaac says, Daddy, I see the wood. And I see the fire for the burnt sacrifice. And I know traditionally when I see you get wood and fire, there's a lamb that's coming with us that we're going to kill and sprinkle the blood and cut the inward parts out and burn it on the fire. He said, but dad, you forgot the lamb this time. And Abraham said, Isaac, I didn't forget the lamb. God will provide himself as the lamb. The Bible says that Abraham takes Isaac, lays him on the altar, puts the wood under Isaac. Didn't light the fire yet. And rears back his hand with the knife in it. And was getting ready to puncture Isaac's heart. And an angel cries out to Abraham and said, touch not the boy. He said, look over to your right. There is a ram caught in the thicket. Take that ram. Tell somebody it was a substitution for what God was getting ready ready to do. Look at somebody say, it should have been me on that altar because my sins were many. It should have been me on that cross because my sins were many. But God switched places with me. And the penalty I should have got, Jesus took it for me. Here it is. He took that ram, killed the ram, sacrificed it. And Isaac and Abraham walked down to Mount Moriah. Let me fast forward now. Here it is on Resurrection Sunday. Three days ago, they took Jesus, the Lamb of God, and they 
scourged them all night long. They beat them all night. As I said this morning, the Jewish tradition was that they will whip you with the cat of nine tails 39, 40 times. Save one 39 times. But the Romans didn't have that kind of practice. The Romans, the Bible says, they beat him all night long. They took ships whipping him. They, when this one got tired, they gave another one the whip. And he whipped her. And when that one got tired, they gave the other one the whip. And he whipped him. They whipped our Savior all night long. But I love Isaiah. This is what Isaiah says. The trans. The, the peace uh, that was upon him. Uh, that's our peace. Uh, listen to somebody. Uh, you ain't got to go crazy. Uh, you ain't got to lose your mind. Uh, you ain't got to fall apart. Because uh, on that whipping post, uh, he said, my peace, uh, I give to you. Uh, look at somebody say, I'm going to keep my mind. Uh, I'm going to keep my mind. Uh, you can have my house. Uh, you can have my car. You can have my job, but he can't have my mind. I'm going to keep my mind. Tell somebody, keep your mind, baby. Don't have a nervous breakdown. Don't have a nervous breakdown. Don't go crazy. He's going to keep your mind. Here's what the text says. He'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. On that way Whipping post. They whipped him. Then he said, With my stripes, you are healed. Touch somebody, say, Be healed in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, be healed. Here it is. Jesus, they beat them all night long, and that wasn't enough. They said we got to crucify him. Crucifixion was a death penalty of that day. The Romans had perfected it. They got it from the Persians, and even ISIS today uses a form of crucifixion. When they behead somebody, they take their head and place it on a stake. That's a show everybody we mean business that said this person did something we didn't like and we took his life. That's what crucifixion mean. It means to humiliate. And they didn't crucify him with a cough around him. They didn't crucify him with his parts covered up. But when they crucified him, they crucified him naked. And here he is carrying a a cross beam, 120 pounds, walking 2.5 miles from the Praetorium to Golgotha. Can you imagine carrying after you've been beat all night, after you've been punched in the face, after they ripped his beard, after they hit him on the head, after they spat on him, after his body has been disemboweled, after his inward parts are nearly hanging out, then to add insult to injury, they put a 120 pound cross beam on it. And here's the saddest part, he didn't deserve it. That should have been me on the whipping post. It should have been me being beat. It should have been me being spat on. It should have been me having my beard rim. But he took my place. High five somebody. Say he took my place. I got to tell you, I'm rushing to my clothes. I got to tell you. Oh, yeah. It was for crucifixion. They only put two types of people in the crucifixion. They only put two types of people in the crucifixion. Hardened criminals, murderers, thieves, and insurrectionists. If you weren't a hardened criminal, if you hadn't murdered somebody, you likely wouldn't be crucified. 
crucified. Uh, had you not stole from somebody, uh, you were likely not to be crucified. Uh, and if you had not tried to overthrow uh, the Roman government, uh, you would have likely not been crucified. Uh, but here it's Jesus. Uh, and the point of it all is uh, that when you uh, are being crucified, uh, the people announce what your sin was, uh, what your crime was. Uh, and for the two, three days uh, that were working uh, hung with Jesus, uh, they cried out all of their crimes. Uh, they said they were thieves. Uh, they were murderers. Uh, they did this and did that. Uh, so the people felt good when they heard, uh, well, yes, they should be crucified. Uh, but when they announced Jesus' charges, uh, the only charge they can level against him uh, is that he said uh, he was the king of the Jews. Can you imagine that? That the only problem they had with Jesus is that he said he was the king of the Jews. And there they are on Golgotha. There they are on, on Golgotha on that hill shaped like a skull. And there they laid Jesus on that cross beam. And then they put the long beam up against it. Have you ever noticed that a cross is really a plus? us. Have you ever noticed that a cross is really a plus? Have you ever noticed that in mathematical terms, a cross is really a plus? And what it indicates to you is that God is about to add life to you. That God's about to add peace to you. That God's about to add joy to you. And the thing that was meant to humiliate Jesus is going to give you life. The thing that was meant to embarrass Jesus is going to give you joy. Here he he is laying on that cross beam and then they put him there and they nail him in his hands and his feet and there is a little seat at the midway point of the cross. If you look real careful you can see it there and on this seat are nothing but sharp nails, glass, and pointed objects because the point of crucifixion was to suffocate on the cross. And so as they were gasping, as the person that was on the cross was gasping from air, they would pull up with their arms and inhale, and they would release their arms to exhale. But when they sat down, the seat part would prick them in the bottom huh? so they had to get back up huh? and e inhale huh? and when they exhale huh? the seat part would prick them back up huh? and it was caused to cause them huh? exhaustion on the cross. Can you see Jesus there? Dying on the cross. Can you see him there? Trying to gasp for air. And he tells old Pilate, no man takes my life. But I lay it down. They put him on the cross at 9 a.m. And by 3 p.m. He cries out with a loud voice and said, Eli, Eli, Laba Sabah, he shouts and the Bible says he gave up the ghost notice now Adam couldn't do it Moses couldn't do it David couldn't do it Jeremiah couldn't do it Hosea couldn't do it Zechariah couldn't do it and Malachi couldn't do it it took God to do it and God is in the man Jesus the Bible says that he died on that cross and when they came to take them off because the Sabbath was coming they would normally break the prisoners legs and when they came to Jesus at 3 p.m. in the evening he was already dead then Joseph from Arimathea came to him and said let me came to Pilate and said let me take his body Pilate said take his body and Joseph from Arimathea put him in a borrowed tomb a new tomb that Joseph had hewn out and he rolled a stone in front of that tomb here it is 
it is on Thursday that they put him in the grave. And he was there all day Thursday, day number one. But while his body was in the tomb, Jesus went down to hell. Because the greatest enemy of man is death, hell, and the grave. And Jesus says, I got to scratch you off my list. The Bible says he went down into hell. There he subdued principalities. He took the keys from Satan. What keys did Satan Satan had the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Satan had been running mankind until Jesus got there. Death had been winning. Every man that ever lived had to see death. Every man that's in the Bible had died. And Jesus said, I got to take the key from death, hell, and the grave. On day two, he kept on fighting. On day two, he went and got all the souls that had believed on him. They said, y'all going to come out of the grave with me. So he gathered up all the saints of old. He's got the keys. He's unlocked them from their prisons. They say, all of y'all come with me. On day three, he says, it's time for us to get out of here. We just waiting for that moment because I got to stay in the grave three days. The three days of Abraham and Isaac journey. The three days that Jonah was in the belly of the great fish. He said, I got to stay in the grave three days. On the third day, Jesus comes out of the grave. An angel is dispatched from heaven to roll the stone away but the stone is not there to let Jesus out. The angel didn't roll the stone away to let Jesus out. The angel rolled the stone away so we could look in because Jesus got all power in his hand. He can roll the stone away or he can walk through the stone but just so so they don't say I stole the body. He said I dispatch an angel that will roll the stone away. It's about 3 a.m. in the morning on Sunday. The Bible says on the Sabbath day, the day after the Sabbath, the first day of the week in Mark. He said it's about 3 a.m. in the morning and Jesus is coming out of the grave. He's already out of the grave but here comes the women. And I love this about the women. It's Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. I'm glad that Mary the mother of Jesus went there. Because when these three women get to the sepulchre, they see a young man in white bright linen sitting at the foot of Jesus' tomb. And they said, why seek ye? He said, you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth? The one one that was crucified he's not here he is risen why did the angel tell them that because they were coming with their spices they were coming with their ornaments they were coming to make his body smell good and ain't that what we trying to do ain't we trying to pretty up dead things ain't we trying to make dead things smell good that's why you put perfume on that's why you wash with soap and no matter what you do later on tonight you gotta take another shower cause that dead thing called your body still stinks and this is what that women tried to do they tried to make a stinky thing smell better but the angel told him y'all failed to hear him he told y'all I'll be in the grave three days and after after three days, I'm getting out of the grave. I'm glad that Jesus' mother wasn't there. Because if she would have saw the angel, she would have shouted, said, I know that angel. That's 
the angel that talked to me when I was pregnant with Jesus. I'm glad the mother of Jesus wasn't there because she would have calmed all their fears. He said, go you and tell this disciples and Peter to meet him in Galilee. Judas has hung himself. So it's 10 plus Peter 11. But why did he tell to go get his disciples and Peter? Because Peter had backslid. Peter went back fishing. Peter was cussing. And he tell me to tell, tell all the drunkards. Tell all them that get high. Tell all them that shoot craps. Tell all of them that's at the casino gambling. Tell all the womanizers, the fornicators, and the adulterers. Tell all the liars. Tell all the pimps and the prostitutes. Tell all the biters and murderers. Tell all the game bangers. You're Peter. And God sent me after you. Don't only get the disciples, but go get Peter. I want the ones that turn their back on them. I want the ones that gave up on life. I want the ones that anesthetize their pain with marijuana sticks and gummies. I want my Peters. Where are the Peters? He said, go get my disciples. And Peter, look at somebody and say, you Peter, you Peter, you Peter. You Peter, you Peter, you Peter. He tells them, go, go get my disciples. Tell them I'm risen. Tell them he's risen. The Bible says that he visited Mary Magdalene. I love this, and I'm getting ready to get out of here. He goes to Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene is the woman that was cast, had seven demons cast out of her. She was controlled by Satan. Uh, Satan had run roughshod uh, over her life. Uh, why did he appear to Mary Magdalene first? Uh, if anybody I want to tell that I'm risen, uh, it would be somebody with credibility. Uh, it would be somebody who got statue. Uh, it would be somebody who's got a good name behind him. Uh, but why go get Mary Magdalene? Because uh, I got to undo uh, what Eve did. Uh, I got to use another woman because it was a woman that helped us get in this mess. So I got to use a woman to help us get out of the mess. I got to use a woman who let the devil trick her. And I got to use a woman who was controlled by the devil. Y'all don't hear me. What God says, I'm getting ready to undo everything Satan had did. If he used a woman, I'll use a woman. If he uses a man, I'll use a man. He said, I got to undo uh, everything Satan did. Uh, Mary Magdalene uh, said he's risen. Uh, he showed himself to me. Uh, said how do you know it was him? Uh, I saw the nail prints in his hand. Uh, I saw the nail prints in his feet. Uh, I saw the piercing in his side. Uh, I saw the crown of thorns prints uh, on his head. Uh, they didn't believe. Uh, the women said uh, we still don't believe. Uh, he appeared to two uh, walking on the road to Emmaus. Uh, they said, did not our hearts burn uh, as we saw him, uh, as we talked with him? Uh, they came and told the disciple uh, the residue that was lost, uh, that was still there, uh, that he's alive. Uh, they didn't believe him. Uh, but here comes Jesus in the room tell somebody is Jesus in your room can Jesus come in your room will you invite him here will you let him linger there do you believe that he got up I said all that to say that he got up with all power in his hand he got up with all knowledge about you and I, he got up, death couldn't hold him, death had been an enemy, a man, death hell and the grave, but when he got up, he subdued death hell and the grave, he said all power, 
All power is given unto me. I said that to say this. A few months ago, in August, my cousin was in a terrible accident. A few months ago, he was declared a paraplegic. He was there in the hospital room. Couldn't feel his legs. Couldn't feel his hand. We said, Mama, squeeze my hand. He said, I can't feel nothing. He said, Daddy, press my feet. He said, I can't feel nothing. He said, oh, man, I'm going to be paralyzed. I looked at my cousin. I said, boy, don't you say that. I turned to his mother. I turned to his father. I turned to his aunt and uncle. I said, he going to walk again. I said, y'all mark my word. They said, we got to do surgery. He said, we don't know. He's not likely to walk no more. He's never able. He might not ever stand up again. He may not ever put one foot before the other. He said, we got to do surgery. We got to prepare his neck. And they put a halo in his neck and put screws in it and steal the feeling. Wouldn't come back. But the church kept on praying. The church, let me say this, the church was praying before he got in the accident. Let me say this, the church didn't wait until he got in trouble and the reason he's alive, because we were praying before the accident. The reason he's not dead, because we were calling his name out. Lord, save him. However you gotta save him. Lord, save him. Fast forward. He's in a terrible accident. It snaps his neck. It bends his spine. He loses the sensation. And he's paralyzed from the neck down. And the doctor said, he may not ever walk again. But the doctors are just practicing. But we serve the great physician who's never lost a case. We serve a mighty God. And I told my cousin, you going to walk again. But you know, in order to walk, sometimes you got to fall. In order to walk, sometimes you got to stand up. You ready, shoot up? You ready to show the church the miracle? You ready to show them what God can do? You ready, shoot up? Come on, help them. Come on, help them, trail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to show y'all something. I want to show you something. This just like this. This is Resurrection Sunday. They saying he will never stand up again. They said he will never walk again. Watch this, y'all. I need some cameraman. Go get the camera. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Bring the camera. Bring the camera. Hurry up, bring it. Bring the camera. I want to show y'all something. He got up. Watch this, y'all. Bring it all the way around. Bring it all, bring it all, bring it all. Watch this, y'all. Watch this, y'all. Y'all, look, y'all, y'all don't see what I see. He got up. He got up. He got up. Look at him. Look at him. He's standing up. He's not where he needs to be. But they said he will never walk. But I found out if you can stand, if you can get up, you're going to walk soon. And I declare and decree that he's getting ready to walk. And if Mookie can get up, you can get up just like Jesus got up. You can get up. Do I have anybody in here that says he got up?
Look at somebody and say, it's a getting up Sunday. 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 If he can get up. If he can get up. You got two good legs. Y'all don't hear me. If he can get up. You got two good legs. You ought to give God some praise. He got up. He got up. Where are all my saved and sanctified folk? Wave your hand if you're saved and sanctified. I want all my saved and sanctified. Just go lay your hands on Mookie. Say, get up. 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 He got up. He got up. He got up. And if he can get up, if he can get up, y'all, you know what? Y'all so bougie. Because y'all just saw a miracle, and y'all was all cute with it. I ain't trying to sweat out my hair today. I ain't trying to get my, y'all, listen. This boy was declared a paraplegic. All his extremities were lost. But God got him up. But God, God got him up. Look, somebody say, I just saw my miracle. And he's not done yet. Do like this. Say, I'm moving my arms for you, Willie. Do like this. Say, I'm moving my feet for you, Willie. I'm praising him. I'm worshiping him. I'm worshiping for you, for you. I need somebody that will praise God for him. He can't use his hands right now. But I'll be your hands. I'll be your feet. I'll be your dance. I'll be it. I'll be your praiser. He got up. He got up. He got up. Sister Lois. Take Mookie's good hand. No, take the right hand and wave it. Wave it for him. He gonna praise God for himself. Yeah, 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 there it is. Yeah, now Mookie with that good hand, you take that other hand and raise it yourself. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got up, he got up, he got up. He got up, he got up, he got up. Y'all, y'all looking at a miracle. Y'all looking at a miracle. The problem is, it ain't your son. The problem is, it ain't your daughter. Cause it had been your son, your daughter, You'll be praising him.
Resurrection Sunday. It's Resurrection Sunday. It's Resurrection Sunday. Pull on somebody. Say, I'm pulling you out of your grave. I'm pulling you out of your grave. Pull on them. Pull on them. Pull on them till they come out. Pull on them till they come out. It's Resurrection Sunday. It's Resurrection Sunday. Is resur Look at somebody. Say, he got up. Say, I'm not talking about Willie. I'm talking about Jesus. He got up. He got up with all power. All power. My brothers and sisters, on this Resurrection Sunday, I'm going to let y'all go. I'll be to carry on like this. But on your row, say everybody on my row gotta get up. Just look down your row. Shame them into getting up. Say everybody on my row. Everybody on my row. Everybody on my row. Got to get up and give them some praise. some praise because he he got up put your hands together give him one more praise Mother Karen done got up. Tell somebody it's a getting up Sunday. It's a getting up Sunday. It's Resurrection. It's Resurrection Sunday. My last point. My last point. When Jesus died on the cross, he satisfied God's sin requirement. By shedding his blood, he bought us back. He redeemed us from sin. That's what he did on the cross. The cross is the payment for sin. The cross, so tell somebody, I'm not a slave to sin anymore. Come on, say it, say it like you mean it. Say, I'm not a slave to sin anymore because of what he did on the cross. But when he got out the grave, he subdued death. Now what that means to you and I is that we got a resurrection too. Because John says, except a kernel of wheat goes into the ground and dies, it stands alone. But if it goes into the ground, it produces many. I got an answer for what they said to Jesus while he was on the cross. This is what they said. He saved many and he couldn't save himself. He healed many, but he couldn't heal himself. 
He resurrected Jairus' daughter. He resurrected the widow's son on name. And he resurrected Lazarus. But can he resurrect himself? Look at somebody. When Jesus came out of the tomb, Not only did he resurrect Jairus' daughter, not only did he resurrect the widow's son on name, not only did he resurrect, whoop, I feel something, Lazarus. He said, but no man takes my life, but I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I'll pick it up again. His resurrection from the grave meant that he defeated death. And because he defeated death, you and I never have to worry about dying again. Because just like Jesus came out of the grave, point to somebody, say one day, we coming out of the grave too. Come on church, give God praise. Cause he triumphed over sin and the grave. Come on, you ought to give God praise. He got up. He got up. If you're here today and you want to give the Lord your life, I want you to come. I want you to come. If you're here today, you want to give God your life, I want you to come. If you're here today, I want you to come. I want you to come. Say, I, I want this resurrection life. I want this resurrection life. I want this resurrection life. If you're here today, I want you to come. I want you to come, I want you to come, I want you to come. What a perfect day to give Christ your life. What a perfect day to say, I want this resurrection power. I want this resurrection power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead can live in you. If you're here today, I want you to come. Say, I want to be saved. I want to be able to shout. I wish I had my 9 a.m. crowd, because they'll still be shouting. He got up. If you're here today, he got up. I want you to come. If you're here today and you want prayer, I want you to come. If you're here today, if you want prayer, I want you to come. Come all over the sanctuary. Come. Come quick. Come, 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 come. Sing this with us. If you're here, you want prayer. Today, you still want prayer, you still have time. Come, come, come.
If you're here, you want prayer, come, come, come. If you're here, you want to be baptized, I want you to come. You want to be baptized, I want you to come. Is there someone else? Is there someone else? Is there someone else that wants prayer? Someone else. Someone else. All over the sanctuary, let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah.
Thank you, evangelism team. Come on, let's give God some praise all over the congregation. Our streaming audience, we're praying for you. Look at somebody and say, he got up. And because he got up, you will never be defeated. Y'all missed it. Say it like this, say, if I get knocked down, I'm getting right back up. Cause he got up, y'all, come on, come on. You can hit me with a haymaker, but if you knock me down, I'm getting up. You can never. Y'all look at me real good. Break it down one time. Y'all look at me real good. You can never be defeated. And if you get knocked down, tell somebody, still I rise. Still I rise. I'm getting back up. Why? Because he got up. And if God can raise Jesus from the grave, what is this test I'm going through? And if it happens to knock you down, just say, I got to get back up. Whisper to your neighbor, say, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get out of your depression. Get out of your sadness. Get over your past. Get over who hurt you. Get over the disappointment. Get over the regret. Get over the failure. Get up, get up, get up. Come on, give God some praise. If you believe, you can get up again. It's blessing time here at the Lighthouse. I'm going to ask you to prepare your hearts to give. Prepare your hearts to give. Give me Luke 6 and 38 or 23. Give me Luke 6, 23 or 38. Luke 6, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Luke 6, Luke 6, Luke 6, Luke 6. I think it's 38, Luke 6. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down. Shaking together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be me measured to you again. What's the first word? Give, give. Now God gave his life for God so loved the world that he gave, that he gave. Um, Jesus' birth was the greatest demonstration of miracle power. Jesus' resurrection was the greatest demonstration of resurrection power. So when God gave us Jesus, he gave us everything we need. And as believers, we trust God's word. We trust his word. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Good measure. Good measure. Give and it shall be given unto you. God loves a cheerful giver. 
How many cheerful givers do I have? How many of y'all like giving gifts? Just like giving gifts. The Bible said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. I'm going to ask you to prepare your hearts. We are a tithe and offering giving church. We are a tithe and offering giving church. Our members, now listen, if you don't have a church home, if you don't have a church home and you want to make the lighthouse your church home, we'll be glad to have you. We'll be glad to have you. Come with us. We'll do you good. We'll do you good. We'll take care of you. We'll feed you God's word. We'll build you up in Christ. We're tithe and offering giving church. And we believe in the principles of giving our tithes and offering. A tithe is 10%. 10% of your gross. 10%. Do you know you can't be God giving? You can't be, you can't, and you can't pay for it either. Because all of us are borrowing air from God right now. And he didn't ask us for a dime for it. But the house that we worship has financial obligations. In order to stay running, we have to play Amarin, American Water, a mortgage. Come on, sewer and trash. And we do that through your generous giving. So I'm gonna ask you, all of you, on this Resurrection Sunday, I'm gonna ask you for your offering. I'm asking everyone to give $31. $31 on this 31st day of March to give $31 for your offering. Your tithe has already been dictated. But I'm going to ask you to give $31. $31. I got my $31. I got my $31. I got my $31. Give me my change. <laughs> Get my change. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. $31. If you have your offerings, I want you to stand. I want to pray for you, pray with you. Yeah, this is calisthenics. It's calisthenics. Go ahead. If you don't have your $31, get as close to it as you can. 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 If you don't have nothing to give, I want you to stand anyway. Stand anyway. I want you to pray, say, Lord, give me something to give the next time. All right, let's pray. Most righteous and kind God, we thank you. We thank you for every offering, for every time we are about to receive. God, do what your word said. Give it to us in good measure. Press down, shaken together, running over, shall men give it to our bosom. We'll give your name the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. And every heart said, amen. All right, at this time, I turn you to the hands of our deacons. We ask that everyone would please stand, face the outer aisles, and follow the directions of the ushers in the back.
there. We're almost at the end of the line. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, deacons. We're at the end of the line. All right. Very quickly. Before we let you go, again, on behalf of Lady E and me, and all of our pastors and all the members, thank God for all of our visitors. Will our visitors just wave wave your hands at us, your visitors? Now, don't, don't make this the last time we see y'all. We'll be here next week, too. And the week after. And the week after. We're so glad you're here. Thank you so much for being our guest on today. And for all of our children, all of our children... We have Easter baskets in our fellowship hall. So go out on this side, go to the back to our fellowship hall and receive your Easter basket. Amen. Yes, your Easter basket. On behalf of Lady E and me and our Lighthouse Church, we say thank you and happy Resurrection Sunday. And for all, every household of first-time visitors, every household of first-time visitors, over to my left, somewhere in that area, we have a special gift for you. First time visitors, we want to give you 